Good day, YouTube. Today is uh, Friday. It's the 14th of December, 2018. And we got a little fab project to build. I'll show you a little picture of what I have to construct today. Um, we have some uh, very interesting little LED strip fixtures, light fixtures, to install on an I-beam structure. That's a, basically an I-beam that goes up about 12 feet and then cantilevers out about 10 feet and there's a we have these really high-end LED strips um, to mount on little stainless clips and those little stainless clips are going to uh, basically be uh, screwed to the I-beam uh, all the way up and all the way out about every couple feet with 1032 stainless screws so we're starting to drill this I-beam. We're drilling right in the center. This red line is supposed to represent an I-beam, not drawn to scale. But we have to drill right into the center. And we're ending up drilling around an inch into solid steel. And we have 150 of these to, holes to make. That's getting a little tiresome for guys that are doing the work. I'm trying to come up with a better mousetrap. I've been thinking about this for about a year that we knew this was coming we would be doing this eventually well now's the time we worked on it for a day or so um got some ideas we know how hard the steel is we know it takes oh quite a little bit maybe up to 10 minutes to drill a hole and then we tap it with a bottom tap and then we mount the clip with a stainless 1032 screw so i'd been on the hunt for one of these little tabletop drill presses thinking I could then modify this little tabletop drill press to uh, be able for one person to take up and clamp to the I-beam and be able to drill uh, without having to apply the pressure and without the drill you know wobbling a little bit which actually makes those first thread or two that you make with the 1032 uh, not very deep not very usable so we have to then drill deeper because we can't hold the drill square um, for 10 minutes while the hole's drilling. So I finally came up with one of these used on the internet because I couldn't buy one new. And it's actually a pretty cool design and I don't want to ruin it because I'm going to keep it when it's all said and done. But basically this uh, upright here is nothing more than a piece of conduit. So instead of trying to modify the base, I'm just going to slide that off, use this much of it, and then build a new little clamping mechanism that will utilize a piece of conduit as a, a slight bit of adjustment up and down to be able to drill this. So scared up a piece of conduit, which is very easy for me. Uh, I grabbed a, a five or six foot piece, five foot piece, whatever it is, of a one inch square tubing and some one inch angle. And I grabbed a piece of oak. I grabbed a piece of oak because I don't want a metal to metal contact onto this I-beam because it's an epoxy painted surface. It is finished and I'd have to pay to repaint it for thousands of dollars if I scrub up the finish. So picture the I-beam, sometimes we call it red iron, but it's painted as this. And this will be the one inch square tubing. I can go in about three and a half inches that's when I hit the center of the I-beam so I'm going to make this about three and a quarter um, and then make this as tall as it needs to be then I'm going to cantilever a clamp out here remember that oak I just showed you so I'll have strips of oak on the both the bottom clamp and the top clamp I'll put a pivot point out here and then I draw down 3 8 bolt here. So basically I have a 5 8 thick I-beam and I'll have two of these arms, one on each side. And you'll be able to just loosen this up enough to clear the 5 8 I-beam, slide this thing on, and then tighten up that bolt and it'll clamp down on it. When we're drilling, this is that piece of conduit here with the adjustable drill on it. So when we're drilling, it's really going to try to pull this up. Um, so this is merely going to hold it in place and so it doesn't fall off. Down here, I thought I would 
uh, just make a little square welding nut on it or something and have an adjustable screw which will allow us to basically have a fence that's adjustable so when we slide this in the drill always hits dead center of the I-beam every time um, and we don't have to worry about that. This old drill that's on here is actually in pretty good shape. It's uh, probably older than me or as old as me. Um, so we're going to run with it. We thought maybe we'd put our own you know, uh, modern day cordless drill in it, but I think we'll run with this. Again, we're only drilling a small hole for a 1032 tap. It's not like we're putting 5 8 inch holes in this I-beam. It's just to keep the fatigue and increase the accuracy of the hole that we're drilling. So that's what I'm setting out to make. I think I have what I need to build it. And I have the uh, pretty much the design in my head and a little bit on paper. So I think I'm going to get the uh, bigger uh, cutoff saw out here. This one's kind of small. I'll get the little, the big one out here and I'll basically get all those big materials cut. And uh, then we'll start kind of laying this out. Start welding stuff together. And I'll check back with you uh, time, uh, time and again until we get this thing done. Then maybe I'll show you how it uh, will actually clamp onto the I-beam and we might show you how to drill a hole. That's my idea. Of course, if it doesn't work, I won't air the video. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. We have been whittling on some steel. I don't know if you be able to follow along here or not, but uh, think about these uh, golden colored washers. Uh, these are just slightly over uh, 5 eighths of an inch. It's about 3 quarters of an inch that these are taken up. That's going to be the I-beam, okay? And this is the face of the I-beam, and then it'll go down and then the other eye, right? So this is wood here to keep from scratching the freshly painted I-beam. This is uh, what's going to be on the back side, the I-beam, and then it's just the front side. This is what will clamp down. This will be the pivot point. These are sitting down a little bit right now. Um, these will be welded to here, and there'll be a pivot point, just a bolt going through there. Then I'll put a, a, a standoff here with a bolt going down to a welded nut here so they can be uh, tightened up with a wrench. Probably put it on the outside so it's not in the way. And that'll give it its clamping force. I've got some of these cut for the center. And that's so that I can put a gap in here and allow that wood to pivot just a little bit so that no matter what the angle is, these are always sitting uh, square and it clamps properly. I got this half inch thick oak. I'll just double it up and I'll make one for the other side. So the drill, I'll grab it real quick. It's going to go in between. So I'm just now setting the width um, because this whole apparatus has to come down a pipe which will weld onto this piece here which I haven't cut to width yet. I'm still determining how wide this needs to be but we know it's got to come all the way down to here. Right now that handle's still hitting, so I might even make this offset a little bit, but um, I definitely have to build it wider. I didn't want to build it wider, but you know I've got this to work with, so um, that's what we got to do. Um, I'll put a bit in it and see that I might be able to live with that, keep that above the clamp. But anyway, it is coming together. I just wanted to show it to you kind of in this mock-up stage. I got a few holes to drill. You know, I got to drill these so I can get a uh, bolt all the way through the oak and then I'll weld the tabs onto here. I'm not going to worry about closing in all the ends and all that stuff. It's not, not going to be installed where it's going to be seen. It's just a tool. I don't need to put extra hours in it that don't improve its usability um, at this time. So anyway, that's just a little uh, right in the middle of the mock-up stage review of what I'm doing. And we'll just keep uh, plugging away. I'll check back with you when I start uh, getting some stuff welded together. All right, we got some work done. Got some stuff welded up together. So this is the uh, pivot point of this lever that will become the clamp. There'll be a bolt 
up and down right here like a nut welded here and a uh, you know like a bolt something like up here that I can tighten up that'll pull that thing down um, this is a pivot point here for this wood I'm going to give it just a little bit of space and then we'll drill that across put a bolt in it this allows these to rock a little bit so that no matter the angle of this arm this hits square I think that's kind of long so right now I'm going to mark that hole so I can drill that and how I do that just reach on the shelf and grab some sort of paint there and mark the hole then so I don't get paint on my fingers put my gloves back on then we'll drill that Nicely marked, right? Hey, let's run over here to the drill press. That's kind of interesting. We're building a drill press. It takes a drill press to build a drill press. Anything that comes apart on this is going to be a 3 8 bolt so that a 9 16 socket will do everything. And think about the guy using it, we only really need him to have one wrench in his pocket. Well, we know it's going to work now, don't we? Well, anything's possible. Yeah. So that'll go back like that. I'm not sure if this is long enough, but we'll just... For demonstration purposes only, try to slide that in there. Like that. Sort of. Do I have a longer one? Where's my other? Yeah. We're just doing some mock up here, so. Something like that. And then that's the pivot. It doesn't have to go very far. It's one size fits all. I mean, we only have one size beam we're working with. So this is going to work. So just going to put a little space in there. And. Probably way more than I need for space, actually. Uh, what else we got? Kicking around here for a spacer piece of metal. Yeah, a little thinner. It's really raining outside. It's like a storm came in here. And I'm going to take this out. I don't need that anymore. So, so, just a little space, yeah, like that, and then we can mark that hole. So, one last look, it's going in tight, that space, it's going to be awesome, I'll pull that up just a little. Yep, it's great. I'll drill some wood. Let's drill some wood. Drilling some wood. I want these to stay nice and tight together. Give me a minute, I'm going to put a C clamp on them. You know, I used to have a drill press vise, and the dang thing has disappeared. It might still be 
nice little shop at home, but I'm going to have to find that eventually. Working with that one, not much fun. Mm -hmm. Sorry, taking a minute. There we go. There we go. Now we got more holes. So anyway, I'm just going to continue to drill and assemble. Most everything is just tack welded for now. Get it all assembled and then uh, we'll get in there and drill it for real. Uh, or drill it. Weld it for real. Just don't want to uh, get it too permanent just in case I want to change something and I don't have to just start over. Woohoo! I can get the bolt to go through the other side. Oh, my wood wasn't lined up. That was the problem. All right. That's the clamp. All right, cool. So now I'm going to go to work on whatever this is. Uh, probably going to weld. I got some strut nuts. That's a strut nut if you've never seen one before. Probably just weld one of those right there. And then a square washer out to here. I think I'll do it on the outside, not on the inside, but just for demonstration purposes. Just to show you what that might look like. And just put a bolt there. Be on the outside, but um, just so that a half inch or a 916 socket or wrench will do the tightening of the clamp. Nice and easy. Alright. I'll check back with you when I got more to show. Well the little drill stand is nearing completion. Just a couple things I need to do yet. I need to uh, mount the wood blocks that are on the bottom. I need to cut one more set of these, get all the proper size bolts, put some washers in here to sturdy that a little bit. But the idea that these uh, move just a little so they're square when they clamp, that's the whole idea about that. I thought I would uh, probably weld like a big fender washer on top of these to give them like a thumb screw. You'd still be able to get a wrench on it and tighten them if we need to. It's possible that a thumb uh, type you know, just a hand action would be tight enough to hold these in place, and you would have to fiddle with a wrench. Get all that done, then I'll just pop the things apart that bolt together and paint it today, let it dry good for a couple days, and then we'll take it and field test it on Monday. So a fun little project took a little longer than I thought I was on this thing from about 10 o'clock yesterday till 5.30. Um, you know, just so many little parts and pieces and, and a lot of thought going into it but uh, it has uh, come together I think it's exactly what I need I guess we'll find out for sure on Monday I'll finish it up and I'll show you the finished product well there it is gang that's the finished product um, I threw some paint on it for primer on it just to protect it stuff's gonna get beat up it doesn't matter what it really looks like I just thought uh, a nice white contrasting color the uh, iron, the I-beams that we're working on are a very dark color. Not quite black, but very dark color. Charcoal. Um, so I'll show you how it works. I stuck a piece of plywood in the vise because it's about 5 eighths of an inch thick plywood. Just a piece that I had sitting around. And I'll show you how it works. <clears throat> Alrighty. Somewhere in there. So again, the only thing that touches the iron is the wood. And 
we're just going to slide this on to the I-beam. Calling this the I-beam. So just like that. There's those two adjustable bolts on the back side. I just welded washers on these to give it a thumb screw because I don't think it's going to take any more than that to make that sturdy, right? And then, um, I think once we're going, oops, I kicked you out, that we could probably leave the drill assembly on there, but uh, this is the drill assembly. And it'll just set in here like so. And then just tighten up this thumb screw, and uh, there it is. So I'll bring you around the side so you get a chance to see what we've got going on here. And then there'll be a bit, obviously, in the drill. Um, it's going to be, I'm not sure what size it is, this clearance for a 1032 tap, but that's what we've got. Um, and then you just simply with the lever, right? Drill the hole. And then we, you can just loosen up the screws and slide it down. We're drilling holes about every two feet on this steel. So I just be able to slide it down. Again, the only thing that touches the steel is wood. Um, it's We're drilling holes in the center of an eight inch I-beam. So it's four inches on center. So I've set this to be just slightly over four inches. But with the adjuster screws that are back here, that are right against the center part of the I-beam, you just tweak those in a thread or so, and they'll lock down. And then when you slide this on, it'll be perfect every time. You only have to worry about this measurement, and that's real easy to see. So I'm going to take it out to the job on Monday, and we're going to put her to use. So I'm going to end this video here. This is my I-beam clamping drill press. Of about twenty dollars that I paid for the the drill press and the drill um, used online, and then we probably got about twenty five dollars in uh, maybe thirty five dollars in parts and fasteners and stuff, and a lot of it I just had kicking around the shop. So um, less than fifty dollar tool. I've got about ten hours in it. Um, I kind of split that up. Uh, Part of it I was working and part of it it was me. I made a good video out of it. So we're all good. So let's uh, end the video here. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, appreciate your comments. Please hit the like button, please. Um, it's kind of like putting a penny in the jukebox. It helps me. It doesn't cost you anything. So I appreciate the uh, hanging out with me in the shop and welding up these little projects. I get these things in my head and until they're built, they're still in my head. And I got too much going on in my heads anymore, so I like to get them built and let's uh, move on. Catch you on the next video.